First thing I want to ask you is just um, how did you come up with the idea of the World Body Painting Festival? And at the time, did you realize how far reaching it would become? I got inspired by the German artist and model Verushka from Lindorf. And she was my inspiration to do something with body painting. When I was 21, quite inspired by everything around me. I was like, I want to do this, I want to do that. And then when I saw the body painting art form the first time, um, it just, yeah, it just attracted me a lot to produce an event out of it, to produce some kind of festival, something to show the people in reality what that is that I saw on these images. It was a park that was within a monastery building. So very controversial. And that's, that, that, that's why I got also the bad new media <laughs> because it's, it's like, okay, within a monastery, there are naked people all of a sudden. And I was thinking like, why are you being so fussy about it? Because nudity always has been in our religion even, you know, in the monastery, the monks, the church, there were naked angels hanging everywhere. And I thought back then our society got over this, you know, having topless people somewhere for art projects. This is something quite normal, but somehow it wasn't. So So was the second one in the same monastery or, or did you move? I was not allowed to use the monastery park anymore, um, but I went to a different village, same area, the same lake, a couple of five minutes away by car. Um, and there I uh, got to work as a tourism manager. So then it made everything a little bit easier for me because I could focus on an event from really a professional side. And then I took over and I got tourism director even. So I could even jiggle more with like opportunities. I was good with the hotel owners. I was, I was good with the mayor, with the politicians, with like institutions and cultural institutions that are important for such an event. It sounds easy, to be honest, but we, or I, was a one-man show in the first years. There was no one else. I was doing the moderation, I was the DJ, I was the MC, I was the artist management guy, I was doing everything by myself, basically. So only over the, after year two, year three, and then the, how our little community started to grow, and that was, that was beautiful to have helping hands uh, that's that's brilliant. Um, so at what point did you realize, wow, this thing could be really big, like it, it could be worldwide, people could be flying from, you know, really far away countries to come and visit? After year four, I thought that could be something really cool and really big. I called it in the first year, the first European body painting festival. When in 2004, I believe, or three, four, uh, the first US American and some Australian artists came over. Then I thought like, wow, this is it. So we changed that to the World Body Painting Festival because the Australians, they were asking, hey, is a European Body Painting Festival. Are we allowed to come? And like, hell yeah, of course, come on. So we changed it, the whole branding and started to grow. The World Championships, I claimed basically because there was none. And then uh, it developed over the years with a huge artist community that I reached out permanent, like all year. Basically, there was no single day in my life I did not work on the festival. Wow, so it, it sounds like it's a sort of ever-evolving festival. There are, there are new features that, that, that come into the, the event um, and also new people from, from new countries. So um, I realize last year and this year have had to be quite different as well. Um, but what's new about this year's World Body Painting Festival? We developed an, uh, an online competition. And uh, first I thought like, okay, let's do two, three categories. And then I thought like, oh, wow, the response of the community is really good. So let's, let's give it another category and another one, whatever we can do. Uh, so we ended up with six different categories. And um, we, we had this, this competition going on. We had 613 registrations from 55 countries. It's, it was actually the biggest competition ever in uh, our history, but of course not live, online. It gave a new community the possibility to compete. Imagine 600 competitors, everybody sending you 20 different photos. 
that's quite a lot. Mm. Someone has to deal with that. Someone has to, you know, and then the judges. Uh, this year we will have like more automatic, uh, like automized structures where artists are using more tools in the internet to have us getting faster because otherwise we have to again have three people just downloading images so we want to have a whole week of festival that the people in Klagenfurt in Carinthia see what is live happening and the online people they also have the they see also beside what they're doing what's happening there ah these are the judges and then in the end we're going to have a big tv show where we stream a three hours long show basically where we award the new champions in all the categories where we have reviews from the week the festival week what installations were happening on site uh, some interesting talks from the industry basically understanding that uh, this year and last year were quite different um typically uh, how many different countries and continents take part in the festival let's say yeah five six seven years we had uh also a growing number of artists. Uh, we had between, always between 35 and 45 nationalities. There are sometimes an exotic, you know, sometimes from Miramar or someone from Kazakhstan or from Mongolia. These are like some, they have not a big body painting community. So sometimes there's one artist from this country and then it's more, but it's always between 35 and 45 in the different nationalities who take place live in a normal festival. We have 350 teams coming together, which means we have about 1,000, 1,200 active participants, assistant, artists, models. Um, so we have quite a international field of competitors coming from every continent except Arctica. And yeah. Um, what's been the biggest sacrifice you've had to make or uh, just challenge you've had to overcome to keep the festival running? A sacrifice is for sure the time you're spending for developing such an event. But I wouldn't say it's a, it's a sacrifice because I love to do that. Um, so it's my passion. Um, and whatever passion you have, you can spend, you know, decades and stuff. Like that. So it's okay. Um, uh, it's but it's sometimes a challenge because you cannot work all the time on the festival and you need to do also other jobs or like you know work in a surrounding to yeah pay your bills and stuff the festival always has been a very difficult uh, situation when it comes to uh, like it's huge you know it's like really we had in the best years almost 30,000 visitors um, but we also had a million euro budget to pay off you know it's the infrastructure in the last years got so expensive the manpower the restrictions and i'm not talking about the covid restrictions it's 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 like the taxing and everything so you're a big organization and it's always been a very difficult uh, every year was just hard to just like getting the budget done not to have too much minus maybe in the whole 25 years i had one or two years where we just broke even the rest of the years we always are in debt um but we make it up with other body painting projects from my company so that's all right uh, but it's still a challenge to just get the budgets together that's um that's quite surprising to hear actually uh but Thank you for <laughs> keeping it going. You know, uh, whenever I speak to an artist in an interview type situation, we always end up talking about the World Body Painting Festival. So it's just like a this this amazing phenomenon that brings people together. You know, and like, and like a meeting place. Uh, I think it's so great that it exists. You know, um, what what has been the biggest uh, blooper in the World Body Painting Festival history that you still remember? Oh, oh my God. I, I, I think they're every year blue parts. Every, like, there were dangerous parts in the festival where people uh, got almost hit by a flash three years ago. Uh, went into the stage because of the thunderstorm. Oh we God. had hail, we had storms going over where judge got knocked 
down by because he got hit by like a piece of a, of a tent you know stuff like this i think the biggest or the best part was uh in the first six seven years when i started to have like like after parties in my hotel room and the people are starting to you know paint the, the hotel room but the year later I say, okay, we have to do after party uh, in in the tent, uh, in, in the catering tent, and then um, there was Sebastian Langer from from Kralen and Craig Tracy and and other fellows. They say like, okay, give me some paint. So we started to to paint each other and throwing paint around all of a sudden. And Matt Emulsion, our DJ uh, from London, he. He, he said like, ah, oh, we need some more painting here. <laughs> so he was screaming to the other dude. And to... So the whole tent was a mess. It was painted a mess. The colors are not washing off. It cost us really a lot of money, uh, but this stayed forever, uh, almost forever. So the after show party turned into an event by itself. So that, that's, that's for sure. An expensive adventure in the beginning but it turned out into something very emotional and something very beautiful yeah i have i have been to one paint party and it was really good fun but it I wasn't in a hotel that. room and we didn't paint the room <laughs> so. I, I see people on facebook still posting wow it was so great and just recently someone had a birthday and she was a photos from the after show party on and there were couples, they got together at an after show party and a year later they had kids, so they're still together. So it's so beautiful stories that the festival produces. And this is something I love about this festival and the community because um, of course you have these core people that come every year and then once in a while, or like every year that, that, that there's a group of here from there and they mix in and they blend in and they got all of a sudden know each other. And there is love and there is passion and yeah, no, that's great. Um, so, uh, Body Paint America is um, developing its first online competition. Um, but what advice would you give to artists who are taking part? The biggest advice I can give is to read the guidelines. How is the procedure, and uh, and how you de deliver your work. Deliver your work in a way that is. I don't know. It's depending on. The judges the, the, depending on the language of course in our competition uh, we speak English with everybody so even though some artists are not speaking English we ask them to get find someone to translate their inspiration or the, the interpretation of the theme but not in huge letters just like short pregnant on point um, and the second thing uh, or another thing which is very important is that people are capturing their images in a really good way and not on a very old phone with like low resolution just read in the guidelines what they ask for in such a competition just thinking a little bit in ahead how should where i'm working even though if i'm home just use a beautiful surrounding, use the space, have a good lighting um, set and uh, a light set and, and, and capture the images in a proper good way. We faced big issues last year when, even though we had guidelines in so many different languages provided, and we asked people to make photos on the back, backdrop uh, or neutral backdrop, ideally black, um, and ask them to deliver and like to name the photos in this and that way um, and send us JPEGs. We got raw files that we couldn't even open without another computer with Photoshop and all the, you know, all the, uh, the, the, the raw plugins of the camera. So that's a big issue. Guidelines, setting, light, good capturing of the image. Boom. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, uh, so, um, apart from the uh, World Body Painting Festival, are there any other projects you're working on? And um, where do you see yourself in, in 10 years time, both personally and professionally? I do competitions at trade shows. Uh, I do uh, work for like artist management, where I try to pitch artists for projects, for commercials. Um, we develop uh, art for galleries we, we 
sell stuff wherever it's we license images we license videos to clients um, we do uh, produce merchandising for artists that we manage this is stuff like from the body painting side that I do basically the whole year we are very often coming with our artists and costumes for events for example they hire us to hire a group and I've been traveling a lot with artists uh, specifically for special for like over special projects from India to China we go to sometimes with my main artist Johannes Stetter we do a lot of uh, shows uh, for, for talent shows it's always huge preparation for stuff like this uh, it looks so simple but there is such a big process behind it. it's incredible and that's like most of my work or oh, it used to be most of my work um, now in the pandemic I started I had there was no trade show anymore there are no events there is no festival there's nothing so there was like a year with nothing and I started to um, to offer my expertise in production in photography in video in web designing and social media marketing for local companies a little bit boring after the festival and all the body painting but something you have to do so if money was no object like if a genie granted you a wish and gave you all the money in the world what what kind of event would you put on uh to, to kind of pull out all the stops and, and make it the ultimate event i would put the money in first place into getting the artists here. I would create a week of festival where a whole city is just like body painting. And not only one location or the park, everything. And uh, that was always my dream. And referring to uh, your question before, where I see myself in maybe 10 years, could be something like this, where a whole region is just, you know, getting crazy about this art all different kind of art forms that can merge into uh into into one big happening maybe it's just a dream and i need another 25 years but hey next year we have 25 years we mm -hmm. are celebrating a quarter of a century and it's going to be spectacular already can you tell us anything about next year's festival yet? No. <laughs> okay. I'm glad we would organize something. Just give me the space and give me the freedom, give me the permission to, to do so. That's that's what I wish, but it will be beautiful. And I would love to see people from Body Paint America um, in the online competition or live next year in the festival, of course. Well, I, I think that's a great place to finish. So thank you very much, Alex. Um, and uh, yeah, good luck with the competition in a couple of months. Great. Bye.